Hello and welcome to another tutorial of HTML and CSS. In this tutorial, we're going to build on the example that we were working with last time. So this is what the example currently looks like. As you can see over here, um, that we have um, a heading called Fruits. We have a paragraph underneath it. Then we have another heading called Fruits I Love. And then we have a paragraph and then we have floated a collection of lists on the left of the paragraph and we achieve this through a property called float left and since this float left was applied onto the division the division holds a ul and ul has li's that's why we have all these extra indentations because of the inherent properties of li so in this example, what I will going to do is I will going to create another block like we have on the left. I'm going to create another block on the right and we will going to put some links in that block. And on top of that, I will going to put here another paragraph so that you can see the flow of the document. So in order to achieve this effect, the first thing that I will going to do is I will going to copy my existing paragraph, which I have down here that is the fruits that come in various colors. I'm going to just take this paragraph, copy and paste it. So now I have two paragraphs that look exactly alike and they are similar in length as well because it's the exact same code. So here if I go in, in the output, here you can see that we have one paragraph that ends and the other paragraph that starts after that. If I put it out in the expanded form, you can basically see that both paragraphs are floating to the right of this a code block which has all these um, fruits listed in it. So now what we're going to do is we will going to now learn how to put another entity to the right of the first paragraph that will actually the second paragraph will also going to span around it. So first of all we need to find a good place for this new entity. Now if I place my new entity between lines 52 and 53 which is another code block of a division then what will going to happen is in my final output, uh, it will not going to be completely on the right of both paragraphs exactly as the first one is. Rather, it will be a little bit stepped down because I placed it after my first paragraph. So it will going to sort of kind of span around the first paragraph and sort of kind of span around the second paragraph. So in order to achieve a better result, what I need to do is I need to put my next code block somewhere before the first paragraph. So first of all, in order to achieve this, I'm going to put out a division tag, just like I did in the first case. However, this time I will not going to use LIs and ULs combination because every time you insert an LI, it automatically inserts a new line, a line break. So we will now going to achieve line break in this example using CSS. So without using the BR tag, we're going to learn how CSS can implement the line break. So the first thing that I'm going to do in this division is I'm going to put some bunch of anchor tags. Of course, they will not be linked anywhere. So they'll be just a bunch of blank anchor tags. So I'm just putting just like some of them here. So I'll just put like five or six of them. And I'll just make some changes to the names. So I have just put together um, six links on my page. Um, so let me show you how it actually looks like so that you can see how it's going to look like after the transformation. So right now, this is how my output looks like in the Internet Explorer. And as you can see, my links are appearing just like a regular plain text right above my first paragraph in line with um, uh, I mean, like the, everything's spanning around the bananas, mangoes, chicos, oranges, strawberry, raspberry list. Everything is wrapping around it. So my final goal is to move these links on the right hand side so that I have something that is floating left and then I have something that is floating right. And both paragraphs are basically placed in between. So that's basically what I would like to achieve. 
So now the first thing that I would like to do is apply some CSS properties to achieve this. So I can just go under my division tag and I can apply some division level properties. And one of the division level properties that I would like to apply is the background color. So I'll try to use different background color so that you could see the difference and I would like to use a different text color. And you will notice that the text color that I was going to use will not going to play a very vital role here because we have anchor tag and anchor tag always takes the default color of blue. But I'm just throwing in there so that you can see uh, that there are certain things that always takes precedence over the predefined values. So we have set the background color and, and the foreground color. So these are a couple of properties that I'm setting. So now you can see as I'm going to run it in the browser, you can see that it will going to take the inherent property of the background color and notice how it, how, how it overlaps you know I mean like it, it comes as a background to that bananas area because a division always takes up the entire line so floating objects will actually be placed on top of the division so now what we're gonna do is I will going to give it a few properties that will going to make this appearance a little bit better so the first thing that I'm gonna say is I would like my existing division to float right now this new division I would like to float right and I would like to provide it a width of 50 pixels. And I would like to apply the padding. Since we've learned about these properties before, I don't want to spend more time explaining the same concept. So um, as you may remember from our last conversation, uh, the padding runs in a clockwise fashion. So basically what I'm doing over here is I'm giving these different paddings, which are my top padding, then right padding, then my bottom padding, and then my left padding. So these are my padding properties. Um, other than that, if I want to give a border width, I can also give a border width. So that will be applied um, to all four borders um, as a width. However, it is up to me whichever border style I want to choose. So if I want to only choose the top style, and the bottom style, then only the top border and the bottom border will going to receive the effect of that. And this is where my color property will going to play a wider role. Even though the color property will going to have no role as far as the color of the text is concerned, but we're going to play some role in the border color here. Um, and then um, other than that, I would like to apply the property of uh, margin that I would like to give um, the right margin and I would like to dedicate around 15 pixels for my right margin. Uh, the, these are some of the properties that I would like to apply. So now let's see how it looks like after I apply all these little properties. And you notice that it is floating to the right of my existing paragraph However, if you look at the links, they're all in blue color. They're all right next to each other. They're running into each other, okay? And it all the links are appearing on the same line. As I gave an XYZ pixels to the width, as it runs to the end, it wraps, it auto wraps the text. What I really want to do is I want all links to individually appear one link on each line. So in order to achieve this, we use a special property in CSS. That property is called display. So instead of giving the display property to each individual anchor tag, I would rather like to visit the head portion. And this is where I'm going to say anchor. I would like to change the display property to block. And now after making this change, let's rerun the page so that you can see what difference that will going to make to your output. And voila, here you can see that all of these links are appear individually one on a line. So display property block allows you to break the row. That's what basically it's used for. So uh, right now, if I would like to increase the width of the box to 150 pixels, now this is, 50 pixels and after I make a, a change you can now see that 150 pixels has been uh, is, is basically the width of this new pair uh, this division so it basically allowed the sitemap to be placed on one row.
So I need to be making one change because I copy pasted. So I wrote border top style in both places. That's why my border bottom was not my, my uh, bottom border was not showing up. Now it will going to show up as well. So as it shows up, the text further gets displaced. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the list of the fruits that I've listed here so that you can see that the left list will going to increase. So after making all these changes, you're going to realize the list on the left is actually a much longer list. And notice how the custard apple breaks on two lines because the current width is not supporting everything. So if I increase the current width to let's say 200 pixels, now it basically puts everything in one place. So whatever space is, is injected, uh, that space is, uh, I mean, like the space is taken away from the paragraphs that run between float left and float right. Now, one other um, uh, thing that programmers will do in this case is uh, if you would like to take away the underline on the links, you can actually do that in CSS. In HTML, you don't really have a choice. The links will always going to have the little underline uh, under them. So I can go under my anchor tag and I can say, well, I would like the text decoration, which deals with the lining on the text, set to a property of none. So now after making this change, if I come out here and refresh, notice they're all links because if I bring my mouse over, it appears as a link. However, the underlining property has been taken away. Similarly, if I say I would like to color all my anchor tags in a light gray color, now you are going to notice that all my anchor tags actually appear in light gray color. So I can do all of these little things. Um, right on in the CSS where I can overwrite the default properties of HTML. So as you might have noticed that I gave the light col gray color to the division, uh, which is holding all these anchor tags, but the anchor tags own properties given by the browser given by the underlying interpreter will always overcome the parent properties in this case. So if I would like to change the properties of the anchor and really supersede with other properties, I would have to give those properties to the anchor tag at the browser level. So now that allows us to put a paragraph and we are um, you know, making this paragraph wrap around. So now let me shorten the second paragraph that I have placed. And let me introduce a third paragraph as well. So now that I have three paragraphs running, so now let's revisit this page. And now you can notice the first two paragraphs are spanning uh, both the left and the right um, divisions, both floats, but the third paragraph only spans the left because that is longer much longer in in length so now let's the reason i place in the third paragraph so that i can teach you how you can break a paragraph to run in a flow right now all paragraphs are wrapping themselves around the floats so if you would like a certain paragraph to come out of the float we use a special property called clear and when we use a clear property we have to specify uh, where exactly you would like to break that um, spanning process. So now what I will going to do with my third paragraph is I will going to put in a, an inline style and I will use a, a property clear and I'll say, okay, clear the right, uh, sorry, um, the left floating because there is a float going on the left hand side. So as soon as I implement this property, and I um, run my browser, you will going to notice that third paragraph actually automatically is thrown outside of the scope um, of the three. So you can you can basically um, notice over here. Let me um, make it the size that you can see this difference much better. So now you can notice that the third paragraph is actually spanning out of, um, of um, the float right 
and it is coming on its own length and it is bypassing the floating properties. So this is how you can go about um, overcome the float property. So what we have learned in this particular tutorial is to how you go about implementing the clear property, how you can make something float on the left and make something float on the right. And then we worked um, in terms of CSS with uh, the anchor tags and we learned about the display property. There is another property that you can work with. It's called the height property and you can give it pixels and that will allow you to have a height block of uh, so basically right now my right spanning links only occupy as much area as they hold the content but if I use the height property I can literally increase the height of the area that it's occupying and that's exactly what we're going to look at now so I am back to this division and this is where I would like to apply the height property and I would like to uh, give it a value of 250 pixels and now let me run this and now you will going to see that it runs pretty long this particular region actually lo runs longer than the left region the left region only occupies as much space as the content that it holds but the right region actually goes past this content length. I can also reduce this uh, length um, if I apply those properties. But however, um, this is what I wanted to introduce in this tutorial. We're going to learn and continue to learn about more CSS properties in the coming tutorials. That's all for now. Thank you for watching.